Construction Cops. I just wanted to say a few words before we start about just what you're going to see tonight. Um, basically, the way the program is going to work is we will start with uh, uh, Gerard Grisey's piece, Stealing, from uh, 1995. Uh, this piece, this concert basically is, is a, sort of an exploration of the sonic possibilities of percussion. Not so much on the loud side of things, but on the more granular and less complicated levels, maybe less orally complicated in terms of sample use. Um, so these pieces, the, the first piece is an exploration of just two bass drums. And they'll be playing them with <coughs> excuse me, different kinds of objects. Uh, one of the bass drums is slightly prepared with uh, wooden balls that are attached to a string that is sort of set in motion by the vibrations. And so it's a, it's a, uh, it's a study in vibration and it's a study of, of sound built up from the fundamental, which is something that Griset was incredibly interested in. Uh, he had started his career as an accordionist, actually. And I think, I think my uh, theory has always been that getting used to like hearing these low notes in the accordion, he started thinking a lot about building up um, through the overtone series from a fundamental. And he explored that uh, harmonically for years. And he became sort of what was called uh, the father of the school of spectralism. And uh, spectralism was something that eventually he almost disavowed as a term, was less and less interested in that concept, but, but always interested in the, the idea of what happens when a fundamental uh, is put into motion and then what, what builds up on top of that. I need, to I need to speak into the mic? Okay, sorry. Um, I guess this is for the, the video. Basically, uh, the, so that's, that's the, uh, that's the Grise. And then from the Grise, we're going to, to segue directly into this piece by Anna Thorvald's daughter. She is a, um, a, a Icelandic composer. And the, the piece that she's composed is written just for a, a prepared piano, basically, or, or it's just, for being played inside the piano by the percussionists. And we'll sort of segue from one piece into the other. It's, it's, a, it's a very gentle piece. It's a very um, uh, meditative piece, I would say. Meditative is the right word. And her music is, is a lot about just sort of long, very calm, very meditative textures. Uh, then we'll have sort of a, sm a short break uh, while the percussion is set up for the second half of the concert. And the second half of the concert, we'll start with uh, a piece by Lou Harrison called uh, In Praise of Johnny Appleseed. And that's a, just sort of a continuation of our, of our exploration here at school of the music of, of Lou Harrison, of his percussion ensemble music. And um, <coughs> when the, the piece was originally written in 1942, I believe, uh, it was written with choreography in mind. And this is where our two dancers come in to, uh, into play. Um, we, we, I decided to try to recreate, not recreate, but to use Lou's uh, original intention to have dance in the piece. And in order to do that, I enlisted our two wonderful dancers from the Lang School here. You're both seniors at Lang. Yeah, uh, Seta Morton and uh, Tony Carlson. So I, I, I th what they've come up with is uh, very interesting, and I'd like to, them to talk to you a little bit about their process and how they arrived at uh, what you're going to see tonight. Hi. Um, so basically, when um, well, the director of our dance program asked us if we wanted to be a part of this collaboration, and we were really excited. We tried to do some research about the. It's not on for you. It's on. It's for on for the camera, I think. Okay, um, so basically we tried to research the original choreography for this piece of music, but we couldn't find anything. So we decided to go further in some dance research and uh, choreographic exploration that we've been doing on our own. And basically what we're doing tonight is an extraction of some of that work we've been doing and sort of experimenting with um, taking that and putting it into the context of um, this percussion group. And um, it's been a really interesting experience just having our practices be uh, side by side. Mm -hmm. So, you want to take this? Uh, I think it's, okay. yeah, we don't want to give away Great. too much. So, yeah, and the, 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 the music itself is, is uh, it's really, 
I mean, Lou Harrison was an inventor of the genre of percussion ensemble, together with, uh, with Henry Cowell and John Cage. And Lou's music is always just utterly charming, and his use of instruments is, uh, is extraordinary. And it's very, very simple. Um, and he just asks for just drums, metal objects, cowbells, uh, sistra, which are basically just bottle caps on a little handle, uh, maracas. Uh, there's a wooden flute that's very simple. He actually suggests that you make the flute by hand, make the flute yourself. And you don't have to be a flutist to play it. It's actually better if you don't. There's a sort of, I hate to use the word primitive because it's, it's, it's not. It's so, it's so complex, actually. It's so sophisticated and it's so charming that, that it's not primitive. But, in a, but he uses sort of uh, Johnny Appleseed. The, the person Johnny Appleseed is sort of a jumping off point. And so there's a very kind of folkishness to the music. It's, it's very much American folk music in a way. And uh, the other thing about this piece to him, it's, uh, it was really at the time, and he, he has a note about it, when he made it in San Francisco in 1942, it actually was an environmental statement for him. And he was using the character of Johnny Appleseed and his relationship to the earth to make a sort of a, a point about how we're ruining our planet. And that was in 1942. And he was, you know, the, the character of Paul Bunyan becomes sort of a destroyer character that wants deforestation and pollution. And so there's a battle between Paul Bunyan and Johnny at some point during the piece. Um, so, you know, that's it. Uh, he was way ahead of his time in thinking about just the importance of an environmental movement in uh, mid century America. So, uh, as always, Lou was ahead of his time. Um, so uh, that's all I'll say for now. I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the last piece on the program when we get to that. But uh, I hope you enjoy it, and thank you for coming. Really appreciate it.
Takamitsu, uh, called Rain Tree. Uh, Takamitsu was one of the really, really, really great composers of the 20th century, uh, a Japanese composer uh, who wrote an all variety of, uh, for, for uh, small ensembles, large orchestras, he did a lot of film music. He was a very prolific and uh, very adept uh, genius. And uh, his music for percussion is very beautiful, and uh, this piece is really a seminal piece in the genre. Um, it's deceptively uh, simple looking, uh, just three mallet instruments, but there's really, really hard parts, the uh, virtuosic playing. Uh, the materials are uh, very beautiful, very reminiscent almost of the musical language of Olivier Messiaen in some ways. Um, there's a very contemplative uh, spirit to this piece. There are lots of sort of imitations of raindrops you'll hear, so in the rivers especially. Uh, it's basically constructed in a way that there's a, a, a central uh, figure. The, the viral bone is basically the soloist, and then there's a rivers on either side, and they sort of comment and help him through his journey, and they all sort of end in this very you know, beautiful way. Uh, it's a very beautifully constructed piece, very well, uh, very well made. The pitches are beautiful, and uh, these guys are doing a wonderful job on it. So I'll let them finish setting up, and we're going to start in just a couple of minutes. I can.
just want to acknowledge that uh, Robbie Bowen and Karen Hida and Jessica Tsang are all leaving. They're, uh, they've quit. Graduating, no, <laughs> these two are getting a master's degree and um, going, going out into the big bad world, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and Jess has uh, been accepted in the guild, so she starts her master's there next yeah. September. So, uh, <laughs> Doing a tremendous job here in the department. It's a big help to me, and uh, I just eternally grateful. Mm -hmm. right, so, all, all of you, thank you all.